happy Friday. I don't know when this video will get posted, so I probably shouldn't have said that. Uh, but this is Karen and Emily Hi. from Nebraska Quilt Company. And we wanted to show you something that came in this week that we have uh, worked up. We have a, a new line that came in. It's from Henry Glass Company, and it's called Timber Nomi's Tree Farm. And so the line is behind me, and so I'm gonna move so that Alyssa can take a picture. Um, <clears throat> this is the fabric line. It's got some cute little red trucks. Little, little gin nomies. Yep, little nomies. So what are some options for this to give you inspiration? Is we actually have a kit ready for you that uses um, a panel. So there's a panel in here that we don't have on display. And is this panel also in this kit? Um, it's the bigger. Yeah, it's a bigger panel. So we have another panel and we can uh, make sure we get that picture for you too. And then there's two other panels that come with the fabric line. So there's this one up here at the top that has the six blocks that you could quickly make a nice little project out of. I can picture a table runner or uh, a wall hanging of some sort. But where we're going to focus today is this tree farm stockings. And Emily's going to demonstrate a quick method for making the uh, stockings. Okay, so, I don't know if you've ever heard of the quick method where you can pull the lining out of. Um, so I actually made it to where it was very simple, very quick. Um, but you can actually pull the lining out. And what's nice is that you can actually wash it a lot easier. It makes, it makes for very easy cleanup after the holidays. Yeah, so especially all like that melted chocolate. Yeah, chocolate or, or <laughs> any other thing that maybe My chocolate. Yeah, yeah, got, got dirty and stuff. Uh, but it easily just slips right in and you can even, you know, tuck it over if you have like fleece for a lining or whatever, you can easily, you know, roll the cup over and be able to have yeah. a kind of a fun look. So here's the cute little project that Emily made yesterday and we are going to walk through how she did that. Isn't he cute? Be jolly. Be jolly. Very fun. All right. So first thing what I did was I actually cut out the uh, panel. So I just simply went around with my scissors and I, I left the green on so that way I got as much of this but I kind of wanted to get the green out of the sides. Um, use that as my seam allowance. So I cut all the way around the green on all the stockings. And then what I did was I took the pieces to have here. I'm attached at the moment. I took these pieces and I laid them out on a lining fabric. So I just chose this green and I just traced out the same shapes. Um, and I just set those aside while I'm working with these. And then once I had those all done, I took the piece and I put it onto batting and I just kind of pinned it quickly in place. Um, just cut a sheet out so that way um, if I wanted to do any quilting, and you don't have to, um, but if you decide you want to do quilting, uh, you just do the quilting directly on the batting. Um, and I did, for like for this one here, I did just lines through. I, I was told from uh, Tara Lynn that I put in behind prison bars. Um, <laughs> But there's so I'm many, like, I'm a dish across. Yeah, there's so many different things that you could do with this um, for, um, you could put some waves in his beard if you want. Yeah, to I mean, that. you could you could drop the feed dogs in your machine and just go to town, do a free motion if you wanted to, ruler work. Um, I might do some cross hatching on this next one I'm gonna do. Um, but just to kind of give it a little body and some, some character, you get to quilt and design how you want. Um, so once I had that, I just pieced, or I, I placed my batting in, and then I just put a couple of pins in just to kind of, you know, baste it so it doesn't move around. Um, and then I just went ahead and I zipped real quick around the edge just to kind of get it all in place, because this is gonna ease out. It's not that big of a piece. Um, so I just did a quick all the way around the edge just to get it placed so that way I can actually pull these out now, um, get them out of the way so I don't accidentally quilt over top of them. Um, and then you can just decide however you want to do it. Um, and you just go, usually when you're quilting, I like to start um, directly in the center and then work my way out one way and then I'll flip it around and work my way the other way. If I'm gonna do cross hatching, I'll start doing this 
and then I'll go back again in the middle and then work my way again. So how about we do some lines and we'll then she can lines. take some pictures and then we'll be back with you uh, when we're further along in the project. Yeah. Uh, Emily's going to work on making the, I want to call it the little tab that you have to hang on your fireplace. Uh, yep, shelf. yep. So it's a little hang. Yeah, the hanging doohickey. Piece. Yeah, the hanging doohickey. <laughs> that sounds like something Karen would say. <laughs> that goes on the end so that way you can hang it. So yeah. um, I just used a piece of scrap about two inches wide, however long. I mean, you're going to cut this down. Um, but about two inches so that way I had enough to fold over to get a nice clean edge and then I just kind of make it thin to where it will easily you know, wrap around um, but yeah I just used my piece of scrap there so that way I didn't have to have any extra material you can even use ribbon as well I suppose um, but I'm just going to put a simple straight stitch through this machine um, you can use a decorative stitch as well if your machine has them However, the machine we're working on currently. Yeah, the, the, the machine we're working on is, is Handy Quilters HQ Stitch 510. It is a wonderful machine. It's a workhorse. Emily says she needs to have one to, for her own house. Absolutely. I absolutely love this machine. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> it is, it does a wonderful stitch. Um, it's a straight stitch only. It's truly a workhorse. It, it has no problems going through multiple layers. Uh, Emily does a lot of patches. I, I work with a lot of leather, and this machine is a workhorse. Uh, it will go through those tough materials like butter. <laughs> yes. So, uh, just wanted to give you that perspective on the on the sewing machine that we are using today. And there, Emily has her doohickey. My doohickey. <laughs> My doohickey is done. All right. So basically, what I'm going to do is when I go to put it in. Um, you don't want to go like this because then it doesn't really hang as nice. I like to actually fold it like this. Kind of like make it a ribbon. like. like yeah, ribbon. just kind of a crossover so you get that. Um, and you can also have it flip around if you want it to hang in a certain way. But it just goes completely like that, like a scarf. <laughs> um, and usually what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and put it back through just to tack the two pieces together. <laughs> all right, so then I have that all ready to go, and I usually just cut the end off here. Because I don't need all of that excess. But I want enough to tack in when I go to put this whole thing together. All right, so we went ahead and we quilted each side. I just threw some lines in. Um, kind of made them reverse so that way uh, it would give me a, kind of the same effect as the first one to where it wraps around. Um, but now all you have to do is you have to go around and cut off all this excess matting. So I'm going to do all of that quick. Mm -hmm. 